this is a big, big update. You know what's going on? So <laughs> it's so hard to do this with a dog. So the Kijimi just got a major update. And if I had like a gun to my head and I had to choose one thing I didn't like about the Kijimi, which I pretty much liked everything about it. But if I had to choose one thing, it'd be that the LFOs only have one amplitude amount, I guess you can say, to all the destinations that you set it to. But that has now changed and the amount of sounds and creativity that you can get out of this thing has just been blown out of the water. So without further ado, let's just jump into making some sounds and checking it out. Right, Frida? You want to check it out? Do you want to play with a synth? Or do you want to go for a walk? Damn it. Walk first, synth later. Dogs are important. <laughs> All right, new Kajimi update. Um, super cool. Biggest addition right away is independent LFO amounts to all of these destinations for both LFO 1 and 2, as well as the ADSR amount of ADSR 2. This is huge because before, if I, you know, had some crazy modulation like this, I only had control over basically how much of this is going to all of those at the same time. I couldn't really tame it in certain areas. So it kind of, you know, hamstringed you, if that's even the right word to use, when it came to doing, you know, deeper modulation with the Kijimi. But now that you have independent amounts for each destination, it's absolutely nuts. So I just kind of wanted to... um you know, dive around, jump around. There's a couple other things as well, which are really cool. For example, with the LFOs and the attack and decay time, um, when you're using those, you can actually go within the menu and set that to be um, basically whether it's affecting the amplitude of the LFO or the rate. And you can just set that in here. There's a bunch of stuff in the LFO menus now as well. You can set their high point and their low point of how fast, like basically their max rate and their minimum rate, which is good for fine tuning and fine detailing stuff or making it a little bit more performative and not really, uh, you know, going a little too overboard. So it's kind of good. LFO poly mode as well as LFO single mode. That was in the other, in the original update, but it's again, the LFOs are really powerful on this thing. You do have to go into the menu for it, but once you set it, you kind of forget it. And there's a bunch of other changes, but yeah, I just want to play this thing. So let's start getting into it. So I already got some aftertouch going on here, but just to show you the power of this thing, we'll turn up VCO2, right? Actually, you know what? Let me turn this aftertouch stuff off so you don't get too confused. That should be good. All right, so let's say I wanted to send LFO1. Right? I can also send it to LFO2. Oh, so right now on this patch, I just went to panel mode. Where's it at? Panel mode like this. And I didn't set this section to be independent or individual. And that again, you set that here. So here, amount mode, we'll go to individual back back. Cool, so what this does, I can say for LFO one, go a lot. And you can see here that LFO two isn't going that much. And that's because you gotta press and hold it. But what's neat, if you're not familiar with the Kijimi, basically these little switches go from positive one way, negative one way, and then bipolar in terms of which way the LFO goes to the destination. So I can set an independent amount saying go negative to VCO2 a little bit and then go positive to VCO1 a lot. Of course, it sounds terrible, but just to kind of get the point across, that's the most easy way to hear this thing. The other way, what's really cool about this is I can actually press multiple switches at once. Well, I just destroyed that. Uh, like this, hold those two and set the amount for two destinations at once. 
So if I wanted to do some really weird. But then I can set the LFO one rate to after touch. Maybe turn up LFO one only. <laughs> All right, this sounds annoying. Uh, let's make something actually kind of cool. Whoa, that sounded like somebody wants to be a millionaire. All right, so what are we gonna do? Let's say we'll do LFO two as a saw to the filter cutoff. LFO 2's rate be affected by aftertouch. Maybe we'll turn the resonance up a little bit, but then turn the resonance down with aftertouch and then the filter up with aftertouch. Already. Oh. And in case you didn't notice, I got the Zoya here. Wow, that was sweet. Sending ADSR2 to the filter. Let's sync them. Let's do aftertouch, uh, give me some sub. A little bit of noise. I need this Zoya. And that's just one, one area. Let's do some other weirder stuff. Let's go positive and negative to the wave shape amounts by different amounts. I'll set these right at 12. I'll turn that noise off. Sub down. LFO2, chill. You know what we can do? I'll, I want a little bit of a waviness to this. So because they're synced, I'm going to take them off, set this back. So you can hear the wave shapes basically smoothly changing because I got LFO1 kind of moving uh, wave shape number one a little bit, and then LFO, or LFO1 moving wave shape two a lot but negative so i'm gonna turn lfo2 up a little oh oh right and then after touch is affecting how quickly that happens it's only and let me set an attack to lfo2 Whoops, got uh, way into that patch and someone started banging on my door. Needed uh, some assistance. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. Oh, and I got keyboard tracking. My favorite's a little bit of pitch bend on the aftertouch, so you get super sour. 
Yo, how good is this Empress, though? Yo. I'm, like, I don't know if you can tell. I'm literally getting chill. Well, that's kind of hard to see. Like, this thing sounds so sick. Let me do amplitude, yeah, of the LFOs for the attack. LFO 1, uh, amplitude. Sweet. And let me do this. And I want to send... Oh, whoops, that was LFO 1. My bad. I want LFO 2 to move the filter. Give me a lot of attack. There it is. It takes a while for it to start kicking in. You hear that? Ooh, and then aftertouch affects the rate. Forget about it. Yes, sir. Ooh. And these are just three note chords. VCO2 a little and detune it. <laughs> oh my god. VCO2's pitch. Let's get freaky with it. A little too freaky? Maybe a little too freaky. We'll turn that one back down. VCO2 to the filter. Starting to get gnarly with it. All right, it's beautiful. You know what? I need to save this really quick. Uh, don't mind if I do. All right, let's take this in another direction and get more of a bassier, hard sound out of this thing. So I'm gonna turn VCO2 up, get our attacks pretty quick. What's going on over here? get the first sound down. So now, maybe we can do, uh, let's do random to the filter and really slow rate. So every time I hit it, it's different. There's even unison modes and whatnot. If I just go into a voice, let's do unison. This might be kind of massive. Huh. Let's see. Nah, we'll do saw. Uh, 
let's go to LFO. And because I have it in unison, instead of poly mode, I'm gonna set it to mono mode so that the LFO just acts as one thing forever, for no matter what voice I got going on. Actually, you know what? If I set it to poly mode, I'm pretty sure it, it re-triggers every time I hit it. Mono mode is free running. So let's see, what else can we do? We can do some uh, cycling. This is my off time. Oh, right, because this is still going. <laughs> oh. Let me see. I got another uh, little patch I like on here. Actually, I'll turn keyboard tracking reverse. Form shapes. Whoa. Let's get this kind of punchy, yeah? Oh. <laughs> that adds so much. <laughs> Oh, I just realized that this is going in uh, mono. There it is. It's just thought of another modulation idea, which is since I have VCO1 synced to two, right? If I turn this down, turn this down, and turn oscillator two off completely. Where's it now? Oh, I'm sorry. Now I have. Oh, okay, cool. So this one here is VCO two is synced to one. I'm guessing green is one is synced to two. Oh yeah. All right, finally figured it out. This here is essentially saying that two is the sinking oscillator. If I go here, this means that two is being synced to one. Basically, two is syncing one. So if I move this 
nothing's happening because it's only oscillator one and I have it down. But if we go to oscillator one, find a nice little sweet spot. That a little more plucky, get some ADSR2 in there. Oh, I gotta slow that down. Maybe velocity to a uh, wave shape. Oh, Velocity is also going to all this stuff. Some Aftertouch. Yo, Aftertouch is so much fun. I thought it was kind of gimmicky for a while, but once I got this and the Deckards, I really see the power in them. All right, let's. Uh, I'm gonna. Ch I change things up a bit here, and I kind of want to focus back on more. Um, I guess pads and kind of slowly evolving things. Really focusing in on the mod matrix. So I'm gonna go to voice, unison. We'll go to poly, uh, cards per voice. Let's do two. Why not? I'm playing three note chords anyway. Uh, let's see, LFO. Alpha mode, we'll go to mono for now. And LFO sustain. Yeah, sure. All right. So that's this ADSR2. Don't go to the pitch at all. You can go to the wave. Let's go positive and negative to those two. Really simple. VCO2 or VCO1, let's go down octave. And LFO, sine. I'm gonna turn this up a lot just so I can get the rate down. There we go, now I'm gonna just dial it back. Actually, you know what? I don't want two cards per voice. I just want a single voice per. Let's see. All that's saying is um, it's kind of like unison mode, but when I play a note, it's going to play two voices or three or four or whatever, but I just want one voice per note. Exactly like that. You know what's kind of wild? I wonder if this will work. Let me go to LFO. And since I have them set in, oh, but that's free running. Um, I'm gonna set the LFOs back to poly. I was gonna go for like a Juno-esque patch, but I like the poly LFOs way too much. It just adds so much more character. You hear how it's really moving around? It's just super subtle. And I'll say VCO2 will go both positive and negative. Actually, we'll do the same for here. Turning that up. There it is. All right, so we'll go. Resonance low, we'll cycle LFO2, we'll get super slow. This is the off time here, I don't want it off at all. Okay, so this sustains a little too long. You're basically building a trapezoid. 
this is basically a triangle LFO. Up, down, up, down. But if I set this, this is your on time. So it's going to go up, hold, and then down eventually. Come on, buddy. Work with me. There it is. I have it set to really long mode. So. And what's great is because you're using ADSR2 versus, well, see, that's kind of where I can. Damn, so I could do what I want. Okay, cool. Sweet, I can do what I want. I like that in a synth. So basically what I was wanting to do is use LFO1 in, in uh, common mode. So it acts as one LFO going to the pitch of both the oscillators and moving them together kind of, you know, seasickness. But I wanted a polyphonic LFO kind of moving a bunch of other stuff around. And that's what ADSR2 is in cycle mode because I can set it to basically a triangle LFO and have like a weird little trapezoid on time and have that move stuff independently because the ADSRs are per voice, but then I set the LFO per basically channel, like the whole sound. So now, these are all moving together if I play a chord. This is all gonna move in one. Hear that? Then I want to set LFO2 at a faster rate in triangle. Oh yeah. In attack mode to the amplitude, not the rate. And if I hold this long enough, you'll hear LFO2. There it is. For those real slow players. Let me turn that up a little bit. Attack up, release up. Cool, so ADSR2 is moving both the wave shapes, but I want it to be uh, bipolar. Oh, it doesn't go bipolar. All good. Set these to 12 o'clock so that they have a common point. And then this is also moving the filter as you can hear. And I can also send, yeah, let's do that. Oh, cool. And then we'll do negative on LFO one, a little, or a lot of it at LFO two, decent amount. Let's turn the resonance up a little. Maybe not that much. Sorry if I'm just whispering, I'm basically talking to myself. Well, I guess I'm talking to you. What's up? How are you doing? Day going all right? Mine's going just fine. Especially when I got the Zoya. Let's take cycle mode off. Faster attack for the filter. Turn the release up a little bit on there. A little bit of key tracking. Waveform negative on aftertouch. LFO2 rate, I'm going to slow it way the F down when I press stuff down, just to kind of have it hang. Ooh, 
Ooh. And what do I want to do with the filter? I guess I can play it because I can have it fight LFO1. Push it down harder to bring it back up. VCO Tudo. <laughs> That's because I got a bunch of pitch stuff. Let's see what it sounds like without that. And same with this one. Oh, and it's synced. I jacked this up. What else is my aftertouch doing? Oh, I guess waveform. Turn the sub up. Also got it going to wave too. Okay, so if I got this, can I do some trippy stuff with ADSR2? Send ADSR2 negative to VCO2, which is going to VCO1. But then I'd have to find the sweet spot. Let's see, I'll say that much. So all I'm doing now is using, that's pretty cool right there. So I'm sending ADSR2 to the pitch of VCO2 and VCO2 is off, but it's oscillator is going to VCO1, basically like a little linear FM. And because of that, I can use the sustain to kind of find like a sweet spot. So then it's gonna go through its attack, its decay, and land on that sweet spot. But the thing to note is that the sweet spot's different for every note. start to hear it. And let's sync it. Ooh. <laughs> you getting sick yet? Ooh, this is beautiful. Okay, LFO1, pretty slow. Go to the wave shape of one, bipolar. Turn the filter down a little bit. Let's go back to that, uh, where was it at? The other one I got on here. The delay verb. Ooh. 
turn up my favorite, the glide. And some pitch bend on this aftertouch. A little bit of aftertouch to the filter. A little bit to the resonance. Waveform shape. Let it hang and... Keyboard tracking for sure on this kind of patch. Yo, just listen to that. <laughs> Way more attack. Oh, that is beyond long. LFO 2 to both VCOs. That's a little too much, huh? Tune. Oh, I don't even have Oscillator 2 up right now. There it is. <laughs> I have a lot of ADSR2 going to the attack. Do a little bit to grab the take the bite off. Yo, do you hear that low note? Turn that filter up without the effects. Let's go into LFO instead of common. Let's go back to poly mode. Oh, this will. Yeah, this is the move. LFO 2 to the filter. We'll do random. Oh, but not to that. Never mind. We'll do LFO 1 to the filter at random. Oh, I think I still have these synced, my bad. Let me see. LFOs can be synced to MIDI as well, in case you were wondering. Oops, 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 oops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
After touch the filter. again well anyway those are some of the updates that uh, I just wanted to mention that make this synth that much greater big one of course independent amounts to the destinations for the three sources here um, LFOs could be synced to the tempo now that the attack and decay the envelope for the LFOs can be applied to either the what is it the amplitude or the rate or both which is pretty dope They have also added micro tuning. You just send it over SysX and then they've extended the VCF cutoff to 22 instead of wherever it was before. I think it was a little lower. But man, the synth that keeps on giving. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Did, I greatly appreciate the thumbs up or give me a thumbs down and let me know how I can make this video better for you to enjoy. I gotta bring this out for the Deckards again. Maybe I'll do that next week. Um, if you want to support the channel, check out this. I got a bunch of synth merch based on there. You know, some hats, some shirts, and whatnot. And yeah, help support the channel. I appreciate every single one of you. Thanks so much for hanging out and checking this stuff out. Anyway, I'll see you next week. You know the drill. Share the love. Share the knowledge. Knowledge is power.